Imagine you're trapped in stasis for almost 400 years. An air tube stuck down your throat which isn't ribbed for your pleasure. Your muscles atrophying. You've been asleep the entire time. Falling out of your stasis pod onto the ground, you're attacked by an unknown monster. And there's no one around to help you. You're going to die. Well, hello there, and welcome back to another video here on the NeuroSpicy channel. Today, we're going to be talking about a book called Pitch Dark by Courtney Alameda. And this is a fantastic book, especially if you're just getting into reading and into sci-fi and horror. It is a sci-fi action horror with a bit of romance scared in and out of it. And it is a very good book overall. And, you know, I, I can't wait to read a lot more of what she's got uh, in the future. But let's talk about this book so i do recommend this book this book is fantastic it's a solid eight out of ten overall and it does leave it open for more content in the future from this world or universe however you want to describe it at the end especially at the very end of the book it's got a section called the author's notes and it basically describes how she uh went around writing this book and it's very interesting it also enhances the book overall adding in the elements that she did because she struggled with her relationship of mixed european and mexican heritage since she was a child and then embracing it all and then making this entire book over four years and changing names and stuff scattered in and out and it was just a great overall added to the book and you can see how she sort of laid and structured the book and remaking it overall which you know is actually pretty interesting i'll probably structure this video in a way where it, i try not to have as many spoilers as possible and more or less just reviewing the book here so the book overall has a good story. It's uh, even the ending's pretty good, which leaves it to be an 8 out of 10 solid book. And the characters, Laura and Tuck, are pretty damn good. I really like the way that it does it, where it sets it in the character's perspective. So it says time, ship, place in the ship, date, and exact time. And then it says character's name. So it says Tuck here. And then it's all from Tuck's perspective. And then later on, it'll go back to Laura perspective, you know, so it keeps switching between Tuck's and Laura's perspective, which is really good because it shows a lot more and how they feel at the time and such. And I think that's a really good way to structure a book rather than having like, I, I picked up a book. Like, let me go get it. I picked up a book from charity shop not that long ago like a couple of days ago and this thing has god how many chapters i mean page 320 we're already on 72 chapters it's a it's barely a horror story but it's called the cottage and like some of these chapters are literally like chapter two is one two three four pages long and then it's chapter three like what is these chapters that's not how you structure chapters really good way of structuring chapters here in pitch dark talking about the book a bit more in depth without spoiling a single thing the basic story of the book is that there's two main characters uh laura which is pronounced laura not laura pronounced laura and tuck and they're sort of divided between centuries so what I mean by that is that uh, Tuck was born 400 years ago, more or less, and boarded a ship which was jettisoned out into space. And then they got put into stasis and that stasis lasted 400 years over the like, however long it was supposed to last. And Laura is a new ship who's coming to find that ship for its vital resource, which is the Yosemite National Park, which is, you know, all the soil and everything, because apparently all the soil and such and the lost lot of bacteria that makes colonizing a different planet after earth has been completely destroyed by various reasons i'm trying to just get the basics not like the the deep in of the book here I don't really want to say much more without spoiling it so there's going to be spoilers next in this next section which is going to be spoilers about the entire book more or less so laura ends up coming to the uss john muir which is the name of the ship that tuck is on tuck is woken up and apparently a ton of his the crew of the john muir has become mutated and turned into creatures called mourners because they they, they make loud sounds that makes them sound like they're crying or wailing that are called mourners it's actually very good creatures that they've made because they're, they're like kind of like a quiet place where the creatures are drawn by sound and if you say a single word they will hunt you 
is very nice. I, I do like that, where you can't have to be really quiet, and it, it, it really does it justice in here with the, the monsters. that Because apparently, because the John Muir is really dark, and there's not that much power, although there is power scattered around and light scattered around, but the creatures have become used to the darkness. So they, 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 they hunt with it with sound and such, and they don't have eyes or they can't see. Uh, it's a very unique, well, it's not unique creature, but it is a very unique way of telling the creature in the story and the way that they've been sort of mutated. Going a bit more in depth into the book, I really liked most of, I really liked most of the stories and the characters. Um, it really played it well. The only part I didn't really fully like was the fact that they killed off a character called Holly, because uh, obviously this is spoilers. Um, you should have seen a spoiler warning just before this, so uh, your, your fault. Watch out for those spoilers. Uh, there's a character called Holly that gets killed off, and I really liked Holly because she was sort of like the innocent, nice girl, and um, killing her off like that, obviously she wasn't made for that kind of environment where you have to be tough and hard, uh, but the way that they killed her off isn't even that she was like too cowardly or anything. She just sort of died. Like, um, okay, so another big spoiler in the book, the conclusion Kisador, which is the name of the ship that's coming where Laura is on board, comes to the USS John Muir, but it crashes into it by a plot that makes, uh, you know, by this th this group called Pitch Dark, which wants to stop humanity from colonizing another planet, basically kill humanity, which, you know, big, big thing there, big thing there. But um, yeah, so the, the, the Conquistador, which is the name of the ship Laura's on, crashes into the John Muir, which sends the, um, because both Holly and Tuck are out going to look and repair something, I guess. Get the trams back online, I think it was. I'm just remembering off memory here, not actually looking at the book. They get hunted by mourners and they have to be quiet. So they have to get into a, like a, a tram car and hide in there. And they buckle in at some point. The Conquistador hits. And then like the, the whole tram car gets flung and it falls down like two entire decks of the ship. And uh, when Puck wakes up, he's hanging down like that scene in Jurassic Park. I think it's Jurassic Park 3 where they're hanging down uh, just over the edge of a cliff, more or less. And uh, they, they have to climb up the seat or the, 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 you know, well, Tuck has to climb up the seats, but in Jurassic Park 3, they have to climb up, like, equipment to get back up on top. Um, yeah, that, that reminds me of that Jurassic Park 3. It's actually pretty good. Uh, the, the, also, the amount of, like, references in this book are actually really interesting. There was a Doctor Who one in there and a couple others that I remember, but, um, yeah, I'm not going to talk about them. I just want to scatter this in here just to say there's quite a few good references in here, and it actually makes me chuckle every time I see one. It's actually pretty cool. But yeah, so they, they have to climb up, and then, um, obviously, he doesn't see Holly. So, where is Holly? Apparently, um... She got chucked and flung out of the uh, tram. Uh, I guess she didn't get her seatbelt on in time or something. No, no, it doesn't really go in depth about it, but she's just dead and dying there. And then Tuck, Tuck has to finish her off because she's dying. Obviously, she's going to die and she doesn't want to die to mourners and that. So she, she ends up just dying. So, you know, Tuck has to finish her off. And she doesn't really get mentioned out throughout the book, but Tuck does say she doesn't want, he doesn't want to like, um, but Tuck says you didn't want to go in depth on it and like have to people remember her like that. So, you know, he ends up meeting meeting Laura at some point and then they, you know, he's like, oh, no, not another noob I've got to teach. And that's pretty interesting. So that's pretty funny, I should say. And then he's got to, you know, teach Laura how to survive. And I won't go in depth on everything, but, um, you know, I don't want to go too deep into it. I do want you to read it. And uh, Laura is pegged as the person who just crashed the conquistador even though she's the daughter of the person who runs the conquistador uh, so there's that whole thing and she's got this like tech in her neck that um stops her from well stops her from harming certain people and she's like being subjugated basically it's called the subjugator and it, it basically stops her from being herself more or less half the time when she gets commanded by certain people to do things and it's illegal tech but it's like basically being a slave at that point but you know she wants her freedom basically she wants her freedom back and that's why she was there when the conquistador crashed and you know i'm, I'm not trying to go too deep into it but it's a really good story and i'm not going to even say anything about the ending but the ending's pretty damn good that's why it's a solid 8 out of 10 book i say grab a copy so my conclusions on the book Pitch Dark is that it's just a fantastic book. Good way to get back into reading. This is my first book getting back into reading. I got lots more books to read and I'm preparing for something in October, which is towards book reading, which because October is National Book Month. So I'm preparing for something there. So Pitch Dark was a solid read from a first choice and you just got to get yourself a copy. 
got to get yourself a copy this book is great and i think i might buy the other books that she's got just to see what they're like they're not sci-fi i don't think they're all sci-fi uh she's got one called shutter which obviously is a horror book but i don't think it's a sci-fi and then i think she's got one or two other books let me google right here yeah she's got shutter and seven deadly shadows shutter is about a girl who sees the undead and seven deadly shadows you can see ghosts and demons that haunts the streets of japan so obviously not a sci-fi not a the, the kind of book that i really like which is science fiction you know space born science fiction so obviously i will read the other ones maybe but not too soon but the next book i'm probably going to read is going to be probably going to be sphere by michael crinchton sorry that it's backwards i'm using the front facing camera so i can see what i'm doing and i'm in frame and such yeah i'm probably gonna read sphere because i i found the dvd sphere um you know by accident while i was looking for books in charity shop so you know i got this a few weeks ago i got this a couple days ago so i'm, I'm thinking read this and then watch the movie and see how they compare and that'll probably be the next video but you'll have to give me a, a a little bit until then so definitely get a copy of pitch dark if you like books like sci-fi and you like something just to get back into reading any one of those picks pick up a copy of pitch dark very good very good book just just get it just get a copy anyway that's uh it's me signing off for your wednesday video this video is coming out on wednesday uh, i have said before that i'm going to be coming out with videos every saturday and at least one short every day which might actually end up being two shorts on some days depending on rules and such and then i'm also going to drop definitely going to drop videos every wednesday so look forward to those